Google cars, they are coming. They are going to be self-driving. They're not even going to have steering wheels. So when the car goes crazy, you won't even have a chance, people. Uh, let's look at some specs from the upcoming Google car. Yeah, so they're going to have some interesting safety measures like a flexible windscreen, foam-like material, the maximum speed for now, 25 miles per hour, so you're not taking a cross-country trip on this thing. Uh, there'll be a button for start and uh, pull over and emergency stop in case something crazy happens. Of course, sensors used for self-driving so that they know uh, that they're not going to hit another one of these Google uh, cars or a regular car. And uh, seating for two passengers. We've also got a little videotape of what the Google car is going to look like. Okay, Annie, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Connie, let's go. There's no steering wheel in the way. <laughs> okay, so starting in 2015, Google is going to start using these cars in states that permit it. Uh, four states right now allow uh, the testing of self-driving cars on public roads. California, Nevada, Florida, and, Florida, and Michigan. Uh, so I guess the first thing is, would you trust these vehicles. This seems kind of crazy. You're putting a lot of faith in the machines. Well, listen, people have brought up before, you know, what if your car gets hacked? What if someone overrides your computers? If Even if you have a steering wheel, you're still pretty fucked in that situation. <laughs> right. I, I hate to break it to you. Um, but, yeah, there's, there's a few things that aren't accounted for here. Like, what if you need to, to wait for your, you know, grandma to get out of the car or in the car? Or what if you need to go find parking? in a several stories tall parking structure and it doesn't read it like you know as being more than one story tall or, or there, there's so many little things that I feel like aren't accounted for. Right. So technologically you just are kind of concerned. A little. I mean not sit, not all situations can be or, or I don't think it's ready yet. You right. know like what if I need to park off road? Yeah I don't right. think we're Where ready either. Go? Yeah, I don't you don't think, think humans are ready I don't think humans this. are ready. Like, I mean, I know they did like studies uh, five to ten years ago at Stanford where they had driverless cars and people freaked out. Granted, it's been some time since then, but still, people are really uncomfortable not being in control, particularly of a moving object. It's an, in our nature to want to be in control of our feet and where we move, it, it makes no sense to be in a car. I think biologically our instincts tell us absolutely not. Right, so before we fully get to the hacking and all the evil things that the machines are gonna do to us, I think that's an interesting part of this, that just giving up the control. Yeah. I mean, just that, just getting into this thing and having faith that it's not gonna get hacked into or just something crazy isn't gonna happen or someone else that's driving, because obviously we're not gonna all change over at once, someone else that's driving uh, normally is gonna just smack right into you anyway. Yeah. You know, like there's there's just a lot of pieces here. Well, this is a good idea if all the cars are automated because right. then you know traffic would be cut down, like and accidents would be cut yeah. down. But when you're still counting on half the time like other people's ability to not crash into you and kill you, it's not uh, incredibly fortuitous. There are so many ethical concerns that like involve having all automated cars too though. Like for example, um, you know, there, there could be a case where a crash is inevitable. If one car has three people, the other car has one person, what should the car do? Who should the car protect? Should it protect you as the like car owner or should it con communicate with Ooh, the other I car like that. The and laws. see if there were three people there, save those three lives and kill you? Like there are all so many questions What are those laws ethics. called? Isn't there a phrase for those laws that robots are gonna have to abide by? Like from iRobot? Like that kind of thing where they're going to have to say like, oh, there's three lives in this car, one just as you just said, and they're going to have to make decisions. You I know? know the word, but I keep making prime directive, and I know that's not it. Yeah. Because that is Star Trek. I have other concerns about these cars. Uh, when I was watching this video, I kept thinking about this. How did I get in this taxi? The door opened. You got in? Who would want to deal with that guy? Um, <laughs> that guy's freaky. That's no. my point. You're going to have these Johnny cabs and they're going to be freaking no. people out. Um, that's from Total Recall, of course, one of my favorite movies. Um, so yeah, I hope so. It's so funny about them because that helps in the studies. They've shown that if they have like a little tiny no. robot, a yeah. little tiny robot in a driverless car, people are much more comfortable. Yeah, see, R2-D2. I would trust R2-D2 to control my vehicle. I don't know that I want Johnny Cup, but that even is interesting because we still want some level of human interaction there, which mm -hmm. is why uh, when they when they wrote that scene, they had the that guy look horrifying. sort of like, but it's scary. That was far worse than having no one there. <laughs> okay, so let's just, uh, let's finish up with the, 
with this machine's idea that, and the hacking and all that kind of thing. I mean, if this stuff is inevitable, then shouldn't we be fighting it any more? Shouldn't we be fighting it more? You know what I mean? We're all walking around with these devices that can be hacked it. into. We're all we're going to be in cars that can be hacked into. All this stuff, I and it's just going to happen. Cars can already be hacked into. Cars can be hacked into now with OnStar and all that. Yeah. Well, now is the time to be forming legislation or, or some kind of figuring out how what, what the order of this is and how it should work, and we should understand how it all works so that we're able to voice our opinions effectively rather than just being like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll take that. You whoa, know. Whoa, whoa. I'm, I'm, You're saying that our <laughs> politicians should have foresight into things that <laughs> yeah. we know are coming, we and they should, should take... Oh, understand it. What, you're saying oh, that no. we as the populace should understand something, and our politicians should have foresight to deal with it. I'm saying knowledge equals good. Whoa. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why you host Nerd Alert, those crazy nerdy thoughts. Lissette, do you want to bring us home on this? I, was, <laughs> um, I don't know if I can be as nerdy, but I was thinking about car ownership and how this could potentially change that, how we may no longer own cars. If it becomes really cheap to just have a driverless car come pick us up and like take us, we don't have to worry about insurance or gas or somebody driving. It might make sense, and that kind of excites me because I feel like it'll lead to lower carbon emissions. Oh, all right, all right. We brought this around to not necessarily oh. the car apocalypse, so I, I kind of feel good about that. Mm -hmm.